Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to be using my everybody's silicone mold to create a little fondant teddy bear. You can find this mold on my website. The link for my website will be listed in the description section of the video. I am using satinized light pink fondant to create the first portion of this particular fondant piece. I do try to mold my fondant completely so that it is workable. I will only be filling the body portion of this mold with 0.25 ounces of fondant. I will not be adding this light pink to the head or to the arms. I'm only going to be filling the body portion of this mold. And I used approximately 0.25 ounces of fondant or maybe a little less. You do want to make sure that you only use enough fondant to fill the cavity. Should you overfill, you can always remove any extra fondant um, that you have in that cavity. Now remember, we're only filling the body portion of the mold. So make sure that no extra fondant is seeping out um, outside of that body portion of the mold. I am going to be using a Dresden tool to help me make sure the fondant is just in the section of the mold that I want. This tool um, can be found in the description portion of this video as well. And this is called a Dresden tool. It's a must have and it's definitely one of my big time favorites. Now I am going to be using Color Meal All Based Color for my fondant in the um, color caramel. I like to use the oil based colors for my fondant because it keeps the fondant pliable and workable. Feel free to use whichever is your favorite, but I do tend to use the um, oil based colors. Now again, we're only going to be filling the head portion because I added the um, color to it, I did add a little cornstarch to my mold so that my fondant will release from the mold easy. As you can see, I did overfill the head part and the body part a little bit because I do want it to sit off of my um, workspace a little bit. Again, the cornstarch will help you to release the fondant from your silicone mold and you can just brush away any extra um, cornstarch that you may have. On your piece I'm then going to just remove the body part as well and make sure that I only picked up the portion of the mold that I intended to again the Dresden tool comes in handy I'm going to go in and add the little pumpkin details the little striping in the pumpkin that you see, I'm going to be adding just three of those, one down the middle and two up the side to make it um, more pumpkin-ish. Take your time with this process as well. Adding in any little details you feel is necessary. Always double check the sizing of your piece just to make sure the head and the body is proportionate to what you're trying to do. Now I'm going to take two pieces of fondant. I'm going to attempt to have them be the same size. Um, I apologize for forming the, those arms off camera, but I just rolled them into balls and then I shaped them into what I like to call a teardrop. I definitely try to size my arms and legs to my body and head to make sure I'm going in the right direction. Take your time with this process. If you need to stop, rewind, and rewatch this, that would be a great idea. Always double check your sizing to make sure everything looks proportionate, um, the head isn't too out of line with the size of the body and the arms and legs.
Again, I'm going to roll my fondant for my legs into two balls, trying to get them as close in size as possible. You can always weigh your fondant as well to ensure that they're both the same size, but I almost have like a feel for fondant and kind of can tell if it's too much or too little. But I do suggest you weigh your fondant just to make sure the legs are the same size. I did roll these into a ball off camera and then I roll the balls into what I call a teardrop shape. Sorry about that, I did it again off camera. Now you do wanna form the little feet of your legs. So what I did was I just kinda pressed in and down on my fondant to make the little um, legs and feet. I wanted to give my fondant piece a bow-legged appearance so that so that you'll see that I did um, kind of bow them in. I wanted to change the amount of fondant that I had on this leg. It was just a little bit too much fondant, so I did re-roll it and reshaped it into uh, the legs. Again, this is a great place for you to stop, rewind, and rewatch so that you can get the shaping of the legs as close to this as possible. But again, feel free to freeform your pieces um, however you'd like to. This is a creative process and you can change it or modify it as you see fit but I think these are so adorable with the little bow legs and kind of clubbed shaped feet. Okay, now that I feel comfortable with the sizing of my extremities, I did cut the legs on an angle because I wanted them to sit inside of their little space without looking weird. So before I glue anything on, I double check the sizing and make sure that it's what I want before I glue it in. Just double checking my sizing, making sure I like it. Again, I use this um, everybody mold in order to make my little person. A very, very small amount of water goes a very long way. You don't need a lot. I'm going to repeat the same process with her little arms. I'm going to cut the arms on a slant so that they sit uh, more snugly up against her body. I am using a clay blade cutting tool and you'll also be able to find that uh, tool on my Amazon storefront and the link to my Amazon storefront is in the description to this video. I am going to make her little arms and hands kind of clubbish like her legs and feet are just because that's the look that I'm going for. And as you can see, I'm just using my thumb and index finger to create the look to her arms. Just adding a very small amount of water to her arms to attach them to her body. A little goes a long way. Now we're gonna work on adding the little hot pink details to our little teddy bear. I am using Satin Eyes Dark Pink Fondant to create the little leaves as well as the little curly vines that I'm gonna be adding to her body just under her head. Again, I first rolled these into a circle and then I rolled them into, I guess like a small oval, you can say, you can see it here. And I use the pointy tip of my Dresden tool 
to just go right down the center of this little um, oval shape to create the absolute smallest leaf you can think of. Again, just adding a very, very small amount of water to the area that I'm gonna apply the leaf. Now, if it gets stuck to your hand, you may wanna add a little cornstarch before rolling and forming the leaf in the palm of your hand because it's so tiny, it may wanna adhere to your skin. So you may wanna just add a little cornstarch to the palm of your hand prior to forming the leaf. Here again, I'm gonna repeat the process. And again, if need be, you can stop, rewind, and rewatch this process um, so that you can better understand how to do it. But just using my index finger, I'm gonna flatten out slightly each end of this ball of fondant, and then use the pointy end of my Dresden tool to make the middle of the leaf by pressing slightly into it to form um, the middle portion of this little leaf. But take your time here, there's, there's no rush. And you can always repeat it if for some reason you don't get it right the first time. And you do wanna make sure that one end is pointed because again, it's supposed to be a little leaf. And I am using my blade to pick that up and place that on my fondant piece. Now we're gonna move on to creating the little curly vine that we're gonna place next to the two leaves that we created. I just use my index finger or finger and the palm of my hand to roll out a very thin piece of fondant into a string or rope, spaghetti, whichever you'd like to refer to it as. And once I get the thickness that I need, I cut it into the length that I desire. This definitely will be a good place for you to stop, rewind, and rewatch again in order to understand this process. Now I am wrapping this very fine piece of fondant around a toothpick. I chose a toothpick because it's the thickness that I need for the size that I want. So definitely rewind and rewatch this portion if you need to. Once I get it around my toothpick, I'm gonna apply a little piece of very small amount of water to where I wanna attach my piece. And pay attention to the fact that I keep it on my toothpick for placement. Whoopsie. The toothpick will help keep it in shape while you put it where you want it to be. I'm gonna repeat this process again so that you can see exactly what I did. Now, because the fondant is so thin, you may wanna add a little white Crisco to the fondant so that it doesn't dry out because I find that once you've worked with it a little bit, it'll start to dry out on you. And if it dries out, once you try and wrap it around your toothpick, it'll just break and fall apart. So if you need to add a little white Crisco to your fondant to keep it workable and to keep it from breaking and falling apart. And again, I'm just rolling the fondant around a toothpick. I'm gonna cut off what I don't need because you don't need a lot, it's a very small space. Again, adding a little bit of water to where I wanna place this little vine And then using the toothpick as a carrier or a, you know, a vehicle to keep it from falling apart is a great idea. Just kind of be careful, roll it off that toothpick and then use your Dresden tool if you need to um, place it or reposition it. Take your time. You can always rewind and rewatch this process. It, it is a little tricky.
once we've completed that, we want to go ahead and apply the head to the rest of the body. I definitely do a size check before I commit to adding it to the um, piece, but double check, make sure the head is the way you want. Sometimes I like to tip it to the side, but this time I'm just going to keep it um, straight. And again, a little bit of water goes a long way. Take your time with this process. This is the part of the video where I'll drop off and allow you to create with a little music in the background. I always do my best work when I have a little bit of music to create by. Want to see me create my fondant figures from start to finish in real time? Check out my TikTok page. The link to that can be found in the description of this video. I'll check back with you again towards the end to see how you made out. Okie dokie. Talk soon. Enjoy. One last question before I go. What's your choice? Narration or music? Drop your vote in the comments.
Thank you so much for watching this video and for joining me as I created this super cute, super easy fondant teddy bear. I'd love to see what you create. So don't forget, if you should create yours, please tag me in your post and I would love to repost you. Again, thanks so much for joining me. I look forward to creating more interesting and fun content. If you have any ideas about future videos, please feel free to drop that information in the comment section. Thank you so much. Ciao, ciao for now now. Peace.